Okay, today we're looking at the second part of the molecular polarity videos and the learning objectives for this video is to be able to predict and explain whether or not a molecule is polar given its spatial arrangement. Uh, we need to revisit nonpolar and polar bonds quickly. So we, to determine the type of covalent bond, it's necessary for us to compare the electronegativities of the elements involved. Remembering that electronegativity is the ability that an atom has to attract valence electrons to itself and it increases from left to right in a period and from bottom to top in a group. So we see our arrow on our periodic table um, if we're going to draw the trend in. This here shows the numbers, the values for electronegativity um, and it's much bigger than the last Pauling scale. I gave you a small section of the Pauling scale. This one here looks at all of the elements so you can refer back to this if need be. So we're looking at the greater the difference in electronegativity, then the more polar the bond will be. Two elements are next to each other in the periodic table, they're going to have similar electronegativities. So we've got non-polar bonds, that's when our electrons are shared equally. And the way that that will occur is if they have the same or similar electronegativity. Electrons are therefore uniformly distributed around the nuclei of the two bonded atoms. And so we have an example here of hydrogen. So they are exactly the same elements, so they will attract those electrons um, the same as each other. Um, if we've got a polar bond, though, that's where we're going to have two atoms sharing electrons unequally. And so we can have a look at our hydrogen and chlorine down here. The chlorine will attract those valence electrons much more readily than the hydrogen. And so we can use the notation of the partial positive, partial negatives um, that we explained in a previous video. So here we've got just a bit of a rule of thumb. Um, so for our, pole, our covalent bonding, we're looking at between 0 and 0.4, we would class that as a non-polar bond, and between 0.5 and 1.7, we'd be classing that as polar. Anything greater than 1.7, we would say is ionic. So we look at the um, some examples here to draw diagrams to show bonding and shape. And if the bond is polar, then we will use those notations of the partial positive, partial negative. So we'll use the values that are written here for hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine and carbon. So you'll have to flick backwards, uh, flick to those. So here we've got H2O, so we've got water. If we look at our electronegativity values for this, we had hydrogen was 2.1 and we had oxygen was 3.5. So the difference between those two is um, 1.4, so therefore we would say that it, that is polar. If we draw our water, so we've got our oxygen, we draw our electrons around, and we end up with two hydrogens bonding, and we drew these in the last video. And so we end up with a structure that looks like this. If we draw that underneath, we've got one, two pairs, a hydrogen and a hydrogen. Now, looking back up here, our oxygen is um, attracting those electrons more. And so therefore, it will have a partial negative and our hydrogens will have partial positives. Okay, let's have a look at example number two. We've got NCl3. So for this one here, we have nitrogen is um, an electronegativity value of 3.0 and chlorine is also 3.0. So in this case here, we have a non-polar covalent bond. So for that to occur, we have, um, we draw the diagrams. We've got nitrogen, one, two, three, four, five, and we have chlorine. We've got one here. Just drawing all our valence electrons, one here. And the last one here. And so if we were to draw that diagram, you would end up with it looking like this, with our bonds being shown. Now for this one here, due to it being non-polar, we don't need to draw any partial positives, partial negatives on there. On the final one here, we have CO2. Carbon is, um, has an electronegativity of 2.5 and oxygen 
has an electronegativity of 3.5. So these two here, yes, it will be polar because the difference is one. So if we draw our carbon dioxide molecule up, we've got um, carbon and we're going to end up with one, two, three, four. We're going to end up with double bonds. That was one that we showed on the last video, but I will do this for you. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have a second oxygen at the top. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this one here looks like this. Okay, now oxygen has the higher electronegativity, so it will have the delta negative, carbon will have the delta positive, and oxygen will have a delta negative as well. So there's our answers for those, those examples there. Now, we also need to take into account, even if we have polar bonds in a molecule, the whole molecule itself may not be classed as a polar molecule. As a polar molecule. The reason for this is we need to look at the distribution of the charges or the electron density in the whole molecule. To do this, we look at two factors. We look at the polarity of the bonds and then we look at the shape or the geometry of the molecule. Due to an uneven or an unsymmetrical distribution, then polar molecules will end up with a slightly positive and slightly negative end. And there we can use polarity to explain our physical properties of covalent substances. So we'll have a few examples here, possible outcomes. If all the bonds within the molecule are nonpolar and the molecule is symmetrical around the central atom, then it's going to be nonpolar. If we have bonds that are polar um, and the same and the central atom has no lone pairs, the structure is going to be nonpolar. If the molecule is unsymmetrical and bond polarities do not cancel out, then it's going to be polar. So let's have a look at some examples. We've got oxygen. Now, oxygen is O2 diatomic molecule, and each of those oxygens will have exactly the same electronegativity. <clears throat> and so, therefore, our double bond is going to be classed as nonpolar. So, therefore, our whole molecule is also nonpolar. With car uh, methane, we've got CH4. So if I just quickly draw that for you. We've got carbon to hydrogen. We're looking at a, an electronegativity difference of 0.4. So once again, these um, bonds around here are going to be classed as nonpolar. And therefore, CH4 is nonpolar. So our next example is carbon tetrachloride. I will draw that for you. So we've got carbon and chlorine bonds around the central carbon atom. Now carbon has an electronegativity of 2.5 and chlorine 3.0. So we have a difference of 0.5, so we can class that as polar. So we can put on it our partial positives, partial negatives, all the way around the structure. Now. As you can see here, even though there are polar bonds, the electrons are all heading out and it's a very symmetrical shape. And so therefore, even though we have polar bonds, the actual molecule is non-polar molecule. Carbon dioxide, let's have a look at that example. So we've got carbon to two oxygens and we've got carbon as 2.5, oxygen as 3.5, so yes, we do have polar bonds. So we can put on our delta negative, delta positive, delta negative. But looking at that, you can see that the structure is symmetrical. The electrons are all wanting to head out to the side. So even though we have polar bonds, we therefore have a non-polar molecule. Looking at another example here, we have ammonia. Now, if we draw ammonia, we have N with three hydrogens. Okay, our nitrogen is 3.0 and our hydrogens are 2.1 electronegativities. So therefore, we do have polar bonds. So now we need to draw on our delta positive, delta negative. So we put our delta negative, delta positive on here. Now, we have an unsymmetrical distribution of the charge. You can see that there's a negative end and then down here is our positive end. So we have polar bonds, 
the bond polarities don't cancel each other out and so therefore this time we have a polar molecule. So polar bond and polar molecules. Net last one here we've got water, so H2O. So once again I'll just quickly draw in our diagram. Oxygen has um, an electronegativity value of 3.5, hydrogen 2.1, so yes it is polar. We can put our delta negatives, delta positives on here. Okay, you can see here that we have polar bonds. It's unsymmetrical. We have a negative end and a positive end here. So the bond polarities do not cancel each other out. And so therefore polar bonds and a polar molecule. Here's some diagrams showing that as well. So you can see the symmetrical um, nature of these molecules. And now we have another exercise here for you to indicate bond polarities and then determine if they are polar or nonpolar. So work through HFCS2, PCL3 and CH2Cl and then check your answers on the following page. So H to F, we've got, whoops, we've got H to F, delta negative, delta positive, um, because hydrogen has a value of 2.1, fluorine has a value of 4.0, so it's definitely polar. And now we need to look at this here. Do we have a positive and negative end? Yes, we do. So therefore we have polar bonds and polar molecule. Okay, our next one, CS2. So carbon is 2.5, sulfur is also 2.5. So we have this as being non-polar. We draw it up, carbon with two sulfurs, they're non-polar so we don't need any um, notation on here and so we can just state that it is a non-polar bonds, therefore non-polar molecule. Okay, next example is PCL3. With this one here, we've got phosphorus is 2.1, chlorine is 3.0. So yes, it is going to have polar bonds. So we draw up our PCL3 and we can now put our polarities on. So we've got delta positive here, delta negative down here. Now this one here, we have polar bonds and we have a positive end and a negative end here. So therefore we can say polar bonds and polar molecule. Final example is CH2Cl. So for this one here we've got carbon is 2.5, hydrogen is 2.1 and chlorine is 3.0. So the difference here is polar but the difference here is nonpolar. So let's look at our structure. We have carbon in the middle, we have two hydrogens and we have two chlorines. Now this end down here, this is nonpolar, but this end here, the chlorine is higher, so delta negative, delta positive needs to be written in. Now we have a polar end where we can see that our electrons are heading down here. So for this one here we have polar bonds, some of them, and polar molecule. Okay so hopefully those a few examples have helped and if you have any questions please don't forget to ask your teacher and we'll see you next time.